Also, we're recording this. Welcome everybody to another Chaos OSPO Metrics Working Group meeting. Uh, I am your facilitator, Gary White. It is a pleasure to be here and let's get right into the agenda. So reminders, we have a meeting break from December 11th to January 8th. Uh, you can come and hang out in the Zoom chat, but nobody else will be here. Uh, mm -hmm. There is an updated funding prospectus for, uh, can oh, somebody took a whole bunch of stuff. Okay, moving it around. Um, there's an updated funding prospectus for ChaosCon EU if you're interested in sponsoring. Um, it'll take place in Brussels one day before FOSTEM, which is also two days before the party train. Uh, come to the party train if you're going from FOSTEM to, I don't know, what was the second one? It's Brussels to London? Yeah, State of OpenCon is the Tuesday after FOSTEM. Okay. And there's a, there is a train with a whole coach that is reserved for chaos. There will be a banner and everything. It's going to be great. <laughs> Um, I pulled some stuff from the chaos weekly updates that I felt would be good for anyone in this group. If you're not like me and don't, uh, love to read all of the updates as they come out, the metrics models to ISO standards, if you want to contribute, um, that's something that we're looking for people to contribute to. Uh, if you have metrics models that you want to be ISO standards, this would be a good place to go. What's up, Nigel? Um, is there live streaming at ChaosCon? I feel like I heard different things. Good question. I'm working on it. So we're trying to get some funding support to sponsor an individual to come and actually do the work just because it's such a intensive all day, not all day, but half day kind of thing. And so there has to, to be, yeah, there has to be someone who only manages the tech. Mm -hmm. So Nigel, the intention is yes. Cool. Thanks. I see your hand up, Natalie. Yes, just a question on that. Um, just looking in the prospectus really quickly, I, I can't see that called out as a possible sponsorship line. I could put it, it this came up like a week ago because we had, yep, yeah, so I had, it had just come up and then we were like, well, if we're going to ask somebody to do it, then maybe it would be nice if we like funded their travel basically to be there. So it's something I could add to the prospectus. Okay. And another uh, thing that's not on the prospectus um, is the we want we're hoping to do a social event in the evening, um, which I didn't add to the prospectus. I actually emailed Stephen about that. I'm happy to email you if you're a better person to talk to. Um, in terms of our OSPO funding, yeah, it's me, uh, me and him. Um, in terms of just who's going to be able to get stuff over the line and get it done in terms of work we have. So yes, if you want to include me, Dawn, that'd be great. And I'll what, do that. I'll loop you in. We would call you our champion then I think. <laughs> what what is the uh like the level of sponsorship for the live streaming? Uh so for the live streaming, it was like three thousand dollars is what okay. we're looking for. Okay. So like a gold plus. Yeah, kind of yeah, exactly. Gold, <laughs> platinum, <laughs> green diamond, whatever it might be, but yeah. And to these points, I'll, Don, you and I can update the prospectus. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. And Natalie, if you can uh, ping me with your email, Cisco email address, I can loop you into that email thread. Yeah, I'll jump, I'll do that into in the chaos Slack now. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. I will also just add, if there are other ideas or requests or, or anything, I think um, the chaos team is pretty open to those. So, yeah, not just, you know, these aren't the in stone. Yeah, we're not super formal. If you come to us and say, hey, we'd like to do this, um, I think we're pretty open to stuff from a sponsorship perspective. So I would perspective. Yeah, agreed. Um, Nigel, to your question, I mean, honestly, if I'm looking at this, the $2,500 in gold, that would enable us to provide like undoubtedly the live streaming because we have additional funds from just some of our grant agencies that support the chaos work that we could offset those costs if they go beyond that. Sounds good. All right. That was a lively discussion about funding and live streaming. And I'm excited because I would also love a live stream. So I'm going to make noise about it myself. Moving on, uh, Chaos Weekly updates the metrics models to ISO standards. If you want to contribute, 
this is a great way to get started. Uh, if you've done this type of work before, especially, uh, we'd love to get your help. Hi, Elizabeth. Uh, I, th I saw you. Oh, okay. No, don't call on you. I'm not calling on you. Um, ChaosCon registration has also opened. So please do feel free. Oh, okay. Bye, Nigel. Um, please do feel free to put your name in, register, come see us. It's going to be great. Uh, I unfortunately won't be there because um, going from US to EU, we're still kind of tight on travel budgets. But whenever we are in NA, I'll, I'll make my way there. Um, and for chaos onboarding courses, there are volunteers needed. If you know things about chaos or if you want to get involved by uh, sponsoring an onboarding course, uh, even if you know very little, it's helpful for you to document the process of learning about something, talking to some experts so that folks who are onboarding in the future can get a more uh, whole onboarding experience. All right. Let's pause. Sorry, let's just pause for one second. I don't know, maybe if Matt or Elizabeth or anybody wants to talk any more about those items. Sure, I, I can talk about the ISO standards. So this is um, something that had come up in the chaos board meeting is uh, kind of on the roadmap of things to work on into 2024. Um, and so the metrics themselves, right, are kind of small individual like atomic things and metric models are collections of metrics that are intended to address particular questions around say contributor health or community welcomingness and the suggestion in the um in the in the meeting was to inquire about standardizing these and so i had a conversation with jory burson at the linux foundation about the processes of doing this um, it was a really positive conversation, and Jory's really, really helpful. And it looks like we're in pretty good shape to move forward. The metric models themselves are largely just based on definitions, not processes, which I didn't know is a little bit easier to um, actually create as a standard. Apparently, processes are quite difficult to create as a standard. Um, and then there were some questions about licensing. Um, and apparently we've done a good job licensing our metric <laughs> models so that they can move into a standard form. That was kind of um, maybe an accident. Um, so anyway, just things are going really well. This is completely new to me. So this is why I put, if you've done any of this type of work or worked in ISO standards, I would really love any input that you might have, or just even just say like, I could reach out to you <laughs> and ask you questions if you've done this before. Um, so anyway, that's it on the ISO standards. Anything on chaos onboarding, Elizabeth or Matt? Yeah, just I can speak to that. Um, just quickly, we are creating kind of a learning management system for folks that are new to chaos. Um, so there will be actual modules that people can go through. Um, we're also going to have some beginning uh, open source, just in general, courses on there as well, since a large percentage of our community is brand new to open source. And um, we are also hoping to get newcomers, as, as Gary mentioned, involved in that because they are the subject matter experts of being a newcomer. So, um, and you know, we're, we'll have people who have been around chaos for a while writing scripts and things, but if, you, if anybody has any video recording or editing experience or wants to narrate one of the videos, that'd be awesome. We would love that. So um, there's a form, I can drop it in here in the, um, in the minutes uh, just to indicate what kind of um, volunteer work you would want to do with it. So that's it. Awesome. Thank you very much for that. Let's uh, go to these upcoming items. I pulled this from the agenda last week. Uh, Emma... Yeah, I, I sorry, I'm, I moved it. Emma's here now, so maybe she can talk to it. But it was something that we, we talked about as an agenda item. Um, with the idea that we would get a few OSPOs to do something and then bring it into, into the meeting after we had maybe gotten a couple of OSPOs to implement a particular metric and then compare how different people were using it. So that one I feel like probably needs some pre-work before we bring it in. I don't know, Emma, if I represented that correctly now that you're on the call. I think Emma just pinged that uh, she's in a coffee shop might have difficulty. I'm trying to be set. Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, just as it's written, I'm also interested 
looking at if there's some some sort of um or touch points between standards work and something like this you know how could we <clears throat> anyway so that's a side point but I, for me the thing that's always been hard to grasp with a lot of the metrics and metrics models is like how has this worked for other people what have they learned and done um and somebody that wants to work uh so that i can i or others can evaluate that metric and metric model for our own work Right, and um, I always use the example of like 3D print makes online. It works for me, that metaphor might not work for others, but that there's like different makes and you can see like how many people have used that one and what how people have ranked it and you know, if they changed it and like you know, they shared pictures of, um, you know, shared pictures of the things they made. And I feel like something like that would be really helpful for people evaluating that trick. Um, and I'd certainly like to contribute to something like that if we were able to as a group say like yes we'd really like to test this metric model that would like bring value to the whole Oslo community and then you know I raise my hand and maybe there's a few others that would I don't know what a threshold would be like imagine like even if three of us could do that and then come back and say this is what I used and this is you know what we did and this is what worked or didn't work something like that I don't know the exact attributes but I'm sure the smart people in the room can come up with those pretty quickly. So, Which um, one? Mm -hmm. Smart people. Smart, well, you know, yourself is one of them, Sean. <laughs> yeah. Modest, but, sh but sharp and smart. But yeah, so I, um, for me, that feels really important to do. Um, and I'd be willing to participate in that, like co lead it but i you know i, I don't want to come with many opinions about i mean i really love to hear from others about what would be valuable but that's that's how i see it um, if that makes sense and also because i'm in a coffee shop and maybe not articulating being soft-spoken so yeah <laughs> please uh correct me or fill in the blanks you think i'm right do we have any other ospos that wanted to volunteer maybe to because if we could get maybe two or three people and just like work offline together to pick a metric or two and and implement and and bring something back to this group maybe after the new year. Yeah, I I'd can... like to volunteer. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Brian. I'd like to volunteer, um, if only because we might serve as an outlier, um, <clears throat> because we're we're not quite the same as other aspects in terms of what we implement. Plus I have a data team that could probably do a better job of picking it apart than I can, so boom. I Ooh. think it'd be perfect to have like different, you know, that I think that would really start to help tease out how, you know, if someone was to come in and look at what Brian did, what I did, what others did, they'd be like, oh, this, this organization is more like mine and this is how it worked for them. I think that would be kind of interesting. Uh, Remy is pinging in and saying that uh, he'd also like to be a part of it um, and add Isaac and Natalia on the invite. I'll drop that in the in the notes. You have a comment, Brian? I was gonna I was about to say, let me know what I need to do for next steps, but it sounds like there's an invite coming, so yeah. And Brian, I can pivot off of you because chances are some of what we might do is just build it in um, eight knot. Yeah. But I'll wait for you to call me or Kelly into that. All okay. right. Uh, I'll put Sophia just, as a question mark as well. Yeah, I was, uh, we can, we plan to use uh, both Grimoire and um, auger uh, at Verizon so you can sign me up for doing this as well getting involved that's a pretty positive response Don the <laughs> question <laughs> that's great that's awesome <laughs> yeah like I'm, 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 always, I'm always afraid of Don so 
got to stay on our good side. <laughs> I'll just look healthy. menacing until someone volunteers. It's a healthy, <laughs> it's a healthy productive fear. Um, I'm wondering, should we maybe spend a little bit of time too and think about what like a metric model could be? I think, Emma, I think your intention is to have like a metric model at the same metric model at each of these five different OSPOs, is that right? Yeah, I think we just picked one. Okay. Um, I had originally I think, proposed popularity, but I don't feel super strongly about that. That was just when I was trying to help um, inside of Microsoft or trying to understand popularity of things. So that was just most recent for me, but you know, there's in other places that I don't so that's my thing. But I think one is so yeah. we can figure out how to do it. And then, you know, if we want to do more later, that's Don, I, I, I'll I'll plug viability that the strategy should be 100% uh, measurable through Augur. If you're looking for a whole model, are you looking for one metric or a whole model? I think a whole model. Yeah. Then uh, if if we use Augur, then strategy is fully um, covered in terms of being able to be measured and and rated. Yeah. And it might be interesting if someone wasn't using Augur and be able to compare kind of the the two as well. I don't know if other people have implemented Grimmer Lab and want to look at uh look at it in in there. It'd be interesting to see how it compares across the multiple tools too. Mm -hmm. I don't know, Emma. What what do you use at Microsoft? Do you use both? Neither. Um. Everybody. I would so just in the OSPO because people use all kinds of things. Um, Justin is Justin Gosses, who's often on the call, does a lot of customized work with our internal cloud mine data, which comes from. And the only reason for that is because it's I think, easier to get or something, but it's, it's not just. But I, we could be all in for using all the things. I wouldn't want to. I would want to contribute to the evolution of that, but I can have a conversation with Justin too to see how we can bridge that. Okay. Cool. Hmm. So this was the one that is currently being proposed. Yeah, this is uh, my proposal. If you want one that's fully covered, I haven't personally looked through all of the metrics models to see which ones are like every metric in the model is available in the same tool. Um, this is one that I know does have that. Also, I'm biased. Because you wrote it. I, I think it would be good, though, to do this with one of the new, new models, because that gives us... Uh, a way to validate it across a few different companies. I, I really like the idea of using this one. Um, how about you, Remy, Brian, does this model work for you? I think in the government use case, can you scroll back down again so I can look at it again? So boss factor will be interested. Uh, the elephant factor I think will be the same like we will sort of be a uh an outlier if you take some of the stuff because we won't have as many external contributors i guess it'll depend on uh, which repos we are analyzing uh we can try and pick some that are maybe more public facing but uh, i think that we'll probably see more of a monoculture probably as a trend in government which is maybe okay because then we can show sort of across the board like all the different ways that organizations manifest so that could be a cool thing yeah, yeah I'm, I'm open and, to other suggestions as well go ahead brian i'm looking at it i think the only thing that we really don't really track right off the top of my head is probably programming language distribution although i realize it's not difficult to pick up so auger yeah, has that I mean, data yeah i know no. I, we just don't pay attention to it. We're not reading it right now, but yeah. that's, that's not a blocker. Yeah, I think especially organizational influence on elephant factor 
um, I think we would be very keen on not, this will be useful. Um, Cause we're very sensitive to, we're very sensitive to being the 800 pound gorilla in the room. <laughs> right. I'm and getting the warm think about, What you should think about too, with this, with this particular model, because this is, this is kind of designed to look at the, the viability of projects that you're incorporating into, you know, into your products or something like that. Like that's one way to look at viability. So one of the things that you might want to do when you pick the repositories that you look at with this are ones that other people use so that you can look at the viability of um, how other people would would perceive the viability of some of the projects that you maintain that other people use. It might be an interesting way to to look at this model. Yeah, and and not to color opinion too much, but a lot of the viability metrics are intended to be a contrasting uh, metric, meaning that you get it for a few options that you might want to think about, and then compare them and see which one you feel more fits uh, your use case and your risk tolerance. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I want to come back to Emma made a or dropped a question uh, from the coffee shop of would this be per GitHub organization or would this be per project or whatever? And I think um, it's an interesting like problem of do we track the same projects as a, as a team and see how we like think about them and what they matter to each company? Are we more looking to get an understanding of what projects does everybody use and how do we use these metrics to judge them? Um, like what would the, I, I guess this is a good question for you, Emma, as the uh, person who's kind of bringing this up, maybe we get on a call and hash out what that strategy looks like if you don't have a thought about it right now or anybody who wants to participate or anybody who has any thoughts about it. Like, how should we run an experiment or how should we think about how to judge the model and test it out and see what comes up? So something that could be helpful here, um, and I'll go back and talk to Justin as well, is um, because it's really hard, like just looking at an organization probably wouldn't be great because, you know, you're lumping in all different type, types of projects, right? And like we have some, you know, LL, like, M open or AI type things where like no one's contributing, they're using, and then the, the collaboration is happening elsewhere. There's all sorts of different types of projects. Um, but Justin has some queries, uh, ways that he groups repositories that he calls cohorts. And he has like, I don't know if anyone has done anything specifically like this, but like tries to find or groups cohorts or, or sorry, groups repositories by a certain set of attributes. And I think you've rather, and this is just off the top of my head and disagree with me, <laughs> but as an idea, figuring out some like, a way to group repositories in a like way. And maybe, you know, we pick 10 that are in a specific cohort grouping and each of us work with those 10 or something like that versus like a blanket, all of the repositories or blanket, you know, some other way of doing it. I hope that makes sense. The The cohort yeah. is, is kind of cool that he's been doing. It's really helped us kind of focus on specific things. Like we can talk more specifically about impact when we're talking about types of repositories. Yeah, we've- Yeah, I mean, and I think a lot of times it can really help to think about, um, you know, if you want to look at a project, I think you have to look at where that, how that project defines itself. So in some cases, like if you look at, um, K Native, for example, that's that's an org um, that has a number of related things that are loosely kind of one project. Whereas if you look at something like um, you know like an individual Microsoft project, it might be under the Microsoft org, but the project itself is really a repository. So I think you kind of need to. I think it depends on what you're trying to look at because different different projects to find themselves differently. So I think that can help. And sometimes like, like Emma said, it's sometimes it's like a cohort. It's like a collection of related things that may or may not be in the same org. Yeah. Does and, that make and, sense?
I think another way to think about this is, um, is it something that we say, hey, use this metrics model and then regroup to talk about how we used it, what projects we used it on and what we got out of it with like a little bit more carte blanche with the intention of getting more understanding of how people use models in general. Like that's another way to look at it that I'm thinking about in terms of if we're getting a bunch of OSPOs together, how to see how it works. Yeah, because I think, you know, it might make, you know, Emma might define define things in the sense of a cohort. Maybe Brian defines things slightly differently um, yeah. for the projects that he looks at. Maybe you do it slightly differently. And I think this will give us a, by looking at it across OSPOs, I think this will give us an interesting contrast into the different possibilities and the different ways of doing things. So I guess the question is, do we all need to pick the, do you all need to pick the same way or do you do it slightly differently? And then we, we look and see what the, what the results are like. And at the end, I would love to write this up as like a big case study. Absolutely. And Emma is dropping some stuff into the chat. Yeah, I'm trying to follow two conversations. <laughs> Sean. I would just say that, you know, we've we've done classification and the kinds of things I mentioned in chat. It depends on how we're going to ask the question. And I think I think we should pick a common way to scope and organize groups. And it doesn't really matter for this activity what we use as long as we're clear about what the criteria for grouping are okay i would disagree with that because i think the grouping depends on which projects you're trying to look at i think some projects would make sense to group in, in one way and some it, it just wouldn't make sense at all for those projects so yeah. i think it I, depends yeah i i, I also agree with that <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and i'm not sure it con i don't think it contradicts what i was saying i think if we're trying to just sort of identify the metric model and decide how to participate, I think the discussion about the criteria can help to inform the criteria. So, I mean, I think actually just talking about how we might think about it and hearing Emma's example um, for the purpose of the experiment. I mean, in the long run, people are going to group repositories in a way that makes sense to them, but um, it would be good to have this activity surface some of those differences and talk about them. Right. So uh, in, in understanding those differences, there needs to be enough freedom of probably what projects people are focusing on. And it's just that those projects are grouped in a certain way. Or I also selfishly, I sort of want to see how the OSPOs come yeah. up with this and not have it influenced by our tools. So I think, mm. I think Sean, I would rather have the OSPOs decide what they want to do and not have it influenced um, by us so that we can get kind of a new perspective on things. Yeah. I would like to hear what Emma has, what Emma's doing <laughs> as well, but yes, I, I, I hear what you're saying. That's, that's a very valid point because we're going to learn something from people just doing it the way they think it should be done. But if you haven't thought about it before, Emma's example might be a good starting point. <clears throat> Does somebody want to take the lead to um, organize uh, yourselves and um, start talking maybe offline about how how to make this make this happen? I can all right, all right. volunteer to put something in a calendar. I'm a bit nervous about taking on like broader organization, but I can put I, in the calendar if you put that in the calendar emma um i can definitely uh justify trying to get people to look at viability as as some coordination work here um because ultimately it does benefit the viability model if we wind up using it across a bunch of ospos and learn a lot about how people feel and think about it so you can you can sign me up as i'll help coordinate and keep bringing it up in this meeting and outside of this meeting Please put emails in the document list in there so that I make sure I send to the right place. Happy sure. to do that. Thank you, Gary. Sure. I'll send mine to you on Slack so that don't persist it in the document. I get enough spam. My email is like really easy to guess. 
Yeah, maybe if everybody on this list could Slack Emma their email addresses, that would be helpful. Yeah. Now I'll, I'll make a little DM for all of us. All right. Uh, I believe that is the end of our agenda. So unless uh, folks have other things that they'd like to talk about in this cohort, I believe we can release you early. Is there anything else anybody wants to chat about? I'd say if this was the outcome of this meeting, it was super good. Yeah, yeah. no, <laughs> excellent. Yeah, this is great. Thank you. Fantastic. All right, everybody. Thank you for coming to another uh, OSPO Metrics Working Group. See you again uh, after Thanksgiving. See you, Gary. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, bye. bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. bye. bye.